Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Fullerton Unfiltered Podcast. It's your host, Brian Fullerton here, hanging out with you guys. Actually, in studio, we have a great guest, uh, actually a friend of mine, Jeff Joyner. How are you doing, brother? Doing great. Awesome. Well, some of you guys here are actually uh, listening to the podcast on the Fullerton Unfiltered Podcast, and some of you guys are actually watching on YouTube. If you guys are watching on YouTube, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. We appreciate the support. So Jeff is actually one of our guest speakers that we have invited into Launchpreneur Academy Live, our live event that we do once once per year up here in Novi, Michigan. And when we put out the trailer video about probably about three or four months ago, uh, we went through all the speakers and had this really cool like Marvel kind of uh, theme to it. And some people saw Jeff Joyner and they're like, Jeff Joyner, who is who is this guy? He is not necessarily part of the lawn and landscape world, uh, but he is one of my coaches and mentors and somebody that I have learned from for uh, well over a decade. So Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Why don't you give these guys uh, maybe just your quick stats, maybe just get these guys up to speed, uh, maybe just some of your credentials, your background, and maybe just give them the, the highlight reel of your life, like maybe like last five or 10 years, if you will. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I originally grew up in uh, just down the road from here in Sterling Heights, Michigan. You're local. So a Michigander at heart. I'm a Wolverines <laughs> fan living in uh, Bucknut country, which is a hard thing to be <laughs> and harder every year. But uh, yeah, what I do professionally, I uh, do professional keynote speaking and training. And so I speak at conferences and do training for companies on topics like uh, teamwork, leadership, selling skills, uh, excellence, execution. Uh, my uh, original background, I was uh, coming right out of college and graduate school. I have two degrees in uh, speech communication and uh, was on a speech team in college where we went around and did speech competitions. And so I was kind of an average student. I was a B minus student, <laughs> sure, uh, which didn't impress really anybody, but uh, did uh, was offered a, a full scholarship to uh, get a master's degree at Miami of Ohio. Okay. And so then they offered me a faculty position. So I was 22 years old, faculty member on a major university, which was a bizarre career twist. <laughs> uh, spent five years doing that, teaching classes in uh, public speaking and interpersonal communication, small group communication. And uh, after uh, five years of doing that, decided uh, to try something else. And I got a, a job working in sales. I actually worked for the Campbell Soup Company for okay. 10 years okay. in sales and management. But um, that's where I started really learning some lessons about uh, about business and about people. I uh, started my own uh, network marketing business around that same time. And so I um, have some experience uh, as a professor kind of in the public sector and sure. in the private sector working for a Fortune 500 company. I've been a business owner for about 30 years. Uh, for about the last 10 years, I have uh, run my own speaking and training company, Jeff Joyner Training. Yeah. And um, I have worked with uh, about a thousand different clients, customers, conferences in uh, 47 different states. Wow. And so uh, that's what I do. Don't have a, a lot of experience working uh, in the lawn care business, but my experience is helping people that have dreams and goals and passion. Uh, accomplish extraordinary things in their life. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, it's funny. Uh, I actually was invited, uh, a friend of mine who uh, I think is part of like the same network marketing group that, that you run with, uh, he invited me to a seminar that you were putting out in Michigan here. And it was uh, Saving Detroit Through Entrepreneurship was like the title of the event. It was on a Saturday. I think it was like 10 bucks. You were this, the guest speaker that came in. And I just remember uh, you telling stories for, you know, uh, two, three hours, uh, just, you know, just carried the audience. And frankly, uh, this was probably about 12, 14 years ago that I've been a Jeff Joyner fan. I've learned from Jeff. He's got some content out there in the ecosystem, if you will, in the, on the interwebs. Uh, but over the last couple of years, uh, more specifically, you've decided to uh, create this whole speaking company, uh, new YouTube channel as well. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, we'll leave a link in the description. Go check out uh, Jeff's YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. Uh, but if you guys have ever heard uh, me tell stories, right, Jeff, on, on my YouTube channel and even on my podcast, I'm always telling stories. And uh, we even have like, you know, story time is in the title or it's on the podcast and people go, Ooh, I love these stories. And most people don't know that I'm not like, you know, the guru of telling stories. I didn't come up with storytelling, but I learned how to tell stories from somebody and that somebody is Jeff. And so I've been a Jeff Joyner uh, student, Jeff Joyner fan. Uh, anytime Jeff is doing a conference, I'm always trying to, uh, you know, get invited to that environment. Uh, but here's Border, a cool borderline stalker. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, because Jeff didn't, you know, he's, I, I'd be at the audience, uh, in the audience, just like a lot of you guys, you come on up, you're like, I'm a big fan. I buy your stuff. I buy your books and your resources. Right. And you're like, 
cool. I've never seen you before. <laughs> but here's the deal. When I said uh, a couple years ago to my wife, I said, we're going to start this training company. And one day we're going to do a live event. And I said, when I do a live event and we got a budget, a little bit of a bankroll, I'm going to invite who I want to come in, people that have been influential in my life. And for me personally, one of those people amongst many, but one for sure with communication, telling stories about overcoming is Jeff Joyner. And so for me to have Jeff in my studio, if you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, for just me to be able to invite Jeff, I mean, for Jeff to even take my call. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, Hey, you don't know me, but I'm a big fan. I've been to your uh, events, your meetings, all this stuff. I watch your videos on YouTube and I got a couple of bootleg things. You're like, who are you? And you know, do I owe you money or do you <laughs> like, is there a ransomware or something like this, you know? Uh, but any which way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hear Jeff, uh, talk to us a little bit about sales training, uh, how we can make sales through telling stories, making impacts in people's lives. Look, a lot of us run a lot of landscape businesses and it doesn't matter if you're selling cars, selling landscape solutions, or you guys are selling brick pavers. The bottom line is we need to communicate. We need to communicate something to our customers. We need to have our customers think and feel and make a decision on different topics and different uh, things that we're trying to have our customers do. And Jeff is, has a unique way of doing that through storytelling, uh, helping people communicate better, more effectively. And I, I basically, I'm going to turn this whole thing over to him and just here in a quick second, because I want Jeff to give us the best he can with how we can be most effective in our businesses. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hear from uh, our show sponsors really, really quick. We're going to kick it over to Marty, and then we will be right on back. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming back and joining with us. So here we go. Jeff, your background is in professional uh, sales and communication. What can these guys learn from you about how to sell to a customer, how to tell stories? Uh, anything that you are thinking that's some low-hanging fruit for these guys for lawn care and landscaping business owners? Yeah. Well, you know, you've hit the magic word, which is storytelling. And when people ask me what I do, that really is what I am as a storyteller. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't learn much in school. You know, you and I have talked before about uh, the, the, the relative value of going to college. I think most people, I'm coming to you as a former college instructor, somebody with several college degrees. And I'm here to tell you, most people in this country that are going to college uh, have no business being there. Sure. And, uh, you know, I have two teenage daughters and uh, we've had this conversation that, you know, most people, uh, you know, my age are sending their kids off to school and they end up majoring in uh, date rape and alcohol abuse. And that's really all they get out of the experience. There you go. And, uh, and so I'm not a big fan of just sending them to send them. Uh, and, and I was one of those guys that like, what was I doing? I really only, I, I, you know, I went to school for five years. I got two college degrees and there's only one thing that I learned that I remember. What's that? And I took a, a class in rhetorical criticism and the professor talked about uh, the narrative paradigm. And I didn't really know what that was. And it was a theory that, for uh, you know, thousands of years, people ascribed to Aristotle's belief that people made decisions based on logic and reasoning. Okay, and that people were logical creatures, right? And they would think things through and make the best decision. And a guy came along in the '60s and said, "No, they don't. Huh? People make decisions based on the stories they hear. Human beings are wired to be interested in, to believe in, to be motivated by." stories. Okay. That's what makes people come alive. That's what makes people listen. That's what all movies are about. That's I love a great story. It, it is about storytelling and, uh, and that's what convinces people. That's what motivates people. That's what you're seeing with all the, uh, the ads and politics, right? It's not about logic and reasoning. It's about, let me tell you a story about something great this person did or something horrible this person sure, did Sure, that defines them. And so, uh, it, so I'm a big believer in the power of stories, that stories drive decisions, stories, uh, are what uh, are what motivates people to action, mm. you know. And and if you're looking for a good example of it, uh, you know, most people, regardless of your uh, religious or spiritual beliefs, most people would agree that one of the greatest teachers of all time was Jesus of Nazareth. Yep. Right. There's this dude walking around in the dirt and yep. uh, uh, started a movement that is still rolling pretty good two thousand years later. Well, how did Jesus teach? Right through stories. Exclusively. Sure. Through stories. Yep. Which Par must, parables, right? Yeah. yeah. Must, must have infuriated <laughs> his followers, right? I just picture, uh, you know, here they are sitting out by, uh, you know, the Sea of Galilee, and they're like, Master, tell us about heaven. Yeah. And Jesus was like, there was a woman walking down the street, and she had a lamp. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and the apostles are like, oh, Jesus Christ, you and your stories. <laughs> and, uh, but he told stories. And here's why he did it, I think, is because that connects with people. People remember stories sure. more than they remember statistics. Yeah. Uh, people remember stories and those stories get passed on and passed on. And, you know, and so I, I kind of, that's really what I do. One of my daughters came and heard me speak at a conference 
And she goes, Dad, you talked for an hour and a half, and all you did is tell stories. I go, I know. <laughs> What's wrong with that? She goes, you get paid for that? And I said, you wouldn't believe how much I get paid for that. Welcome to YouTube. Yeah, you're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, so what, hey, what does that mean to you? You're a, uh, a landscape business owner. Uh, you know, you're, you're running a lawn maintenance business. Um, you know, and again, and I fully admit, I'm not an expert in your business. Sure. Um, I have, I, I think I told you, I have one experience when it comes to my very first business I ever owned was a lawn care business. Okay, sure. And you haven't heard the story, have you? I have not heard the story. All right, so here's the story. I'm 13 years old. My brother's 14 years old. We wanted to start, uh, we started to make money, right? But we were too young to get a job. Yeah. And uh, we said, hey, well, let's start a lawn mowing business. Okay. And so <laughs> talked to my dad about it. And he said, all right, you guys can borrow my lawn mower. Oh. Uh-huh. And uh, which lesson number one. If you're borrowing someone else's lawnmower, then you don't own the business. Right. You got your first investor. That's lesson number one, right? We're really business. But we decided, and we, and we debated for days, was it going to be, my brother's name was Darren. Is it going to be J and D lawn oh, care business okay. or D and J? And we had a, a little spiral notebook and I kept writing J and D on it and he would cross it out and write D and J. But we said, okay, well, what's our, what's our plan? We got to get some customers. Right, right, right. Right. And I said, okay, well, let's make up a flyer. Mm-hmm. Right. We're, I'm talking about, this is in the, this is in the seventies. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to make up a flyer. And my dad worked at General Motors where they had a Xerox machine. Right, right, you right. can make copies. <laughs> and I said, Darren, we'll go around the neighborhood. And uh, we will, uh, you know, we'll get customers. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Go around the neighborhood and get customers. Yeah. I said, well, we'll go. Knock on doors. Knock on doors. Hello. And uh, tell people who we are yeah. and see if they want to use our service. He goes, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I go, what do you mean? He goes, I am not talking to strangers. I am not going door to door. I'm not. Right. And I said, well, what are we going to do? He goes, how about this? You go door to door and get the customers and then I'll mow the lawns. Oh, so you got the sales division and the operations division. That's exactly right. At 13 years old. Yeah. I said, hey. Got this thing licked. Got white collar, blue collar. <laughs> Sign me up for this deal. So we shook on it. Yeah. And that was our deal. Okay. I'll go get the customers and then you mow the lawns. I go, you sure you're good with that? He goes, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I learned a lot of lessons from this experience, right? And the biggest lesson is that having uh, sales and the uh, operations side of your business in separate entities never works. Okay. Because I was going around the neighborhood cutting some really low deals, <laughs> right? Hey, how much to mow? Uh, how much do you guys charge? Uh, 20, 20, bucks. 20 bucks for a yard. And they're like, well, that's too much. 10 bucks. <laughs> that's too much. $3. Yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I literally, your brother's doing the work. What do you care? I literally <laughs> couldn't care. So I signed up everybody. Right. Right. And they're like, how much to pull all these weeds? A dollar. Yeah, I don't you tell I, me. It is all gravy for me. Cause we're going to split this 50, 50. And so my dumb brother was okay with this deal. And so I go around and I set up like literally like a hundred clients in Sterling Heights, Michigan that we're going to mow their lawns. That's where Keith Kalfas lives. He's another big uh, YouTuber landscaper. So there was, we're, uh, we're, uh, if you know, Fox Hill drive. And so right between 16 and 17 and Ryan and mine, and we got everybody lined up and signed up. <laughs> and uh, then I turned it over to Darren. Now I decided out of you know the goodness of my heart that I was also in addition to being vice president of sales, I was also going to be in uh, management. Okay. And so I would go with him and I would sit in a lawn chair <laughs> and read a book and supervise him as he mowed the lawns. And he's mowing all the lawns and we're splitting the money. This is going great. Yeah. And uh, one day my dad uh, comes home from General Motors, uh, comes home for lunch and, hey, where's Darren and Jeff? Oh, they're out mowing lawns over there. They're over Mr. Mr. Fain's house. And my dad comes over there and I'm sitting in a lawn chair. And uh, he goes, so how's this work? Do you guys like take turns mowing lawns? I go, no, I'm done. <laughs> I already did my work in the spring. He's what are you talking about? I go, dad, I set up all the clients. Yeah. And uh, my dad was a great man. He was a good father to this day. He's a good father, but I still maintain, uh, and we talk about this all the time that he made a grievous error. Oh. This was like his biggest mistake in parenting is that he broke up our contract. Oh no. And he said, it's not fair what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, Darren, you're an idiot. Slapped him in the head. <laughs> He's, you know, don't make such a dumb deal. And he forced us to start sharing the lawn mowing from that point forward. Oh no! Which was a violation of our contract, <laughs> clearly. And uh, and to this day, I, I honestly believe that the right decision would have been to say, "All right, hey Darren, don't be so dumb." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jeff, good job with negotiating <laughs> skills. And next year, make a better deal. Sure. Uh, but that was our ill-fated uh, lawn care business because, uh, and, and here's one of the lessons I learned: um, I didn't care how much they paid because I wasn't doing the work. Mm. But he didn't care the quality of job he did because he wasn't facing the customers. Okay, okay. So he's doing sloppy work, cutting corners. What does he care? Yeah. He doesn't got to, I'm the one that they're the calling answer. back yeah. saying, hey, this is the sloppiest job. And I'm like, 
I'm going to get on it. <laughs> My lawnmower guy is going to he's, he's going to get fired. And so uh, it really kind of it spun out, you know, where I, I got frustrated with him. He's frustrated with me. And so I learned actually a lot of lessons about business from Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, you can't say that I know nothing about the lawn care business because I'm a former uh, lawn care business owner. But, um, but uh, you know, when you talk about stories, I, I do believe – you know, I, I do a lot of speaking and training with groups that are, um, you know, independent, smaller business owners, sure. right? Like I, I've been a speaker a few times at the North American Pizza and Ice Cream Show, which there you probably go. didn't know there was such a thing. Nope. But this is all of the independent pizza shops and ice cream shops in North America. Sure. And um, so imagine you own, uh, you know, Brian's Pizza. Yeah. You know, do you have disadvantages? Hey, I worked at Little Caesar. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so. there you go. So you learn some things. There you go. Uh, you know the secret sauce, literally. Yeah. <laughs> so... But if you started up Brian's Pizza, you have some disadvantages, mm -hmm. do you not, yep. to Little Caesars, Domino's, Hungry Howie's, Papa John's, sure. Pizza Hut. What are those disadvantages? Uh, I mean, they've got a system. Right. They have, a, they have a system that they've figured out. They get better prices on products, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to buy 10 pounds of cheese from Cisco. They get a better price than you get. Sure, sure. Uh, they have national advertising, yeah. right, that you can't compete with. Right. Right, they're doing uh, you know you know big ads on TV and coupons that yep. they're doing that you can't do at Brian's Pizza doing coupons, right. but you have a huge advantage. And and so I'm speaking at this conference, and they're all moaning and groaning about the disadvantages they have, which yep. are obvious. Right, right, right. They're obvious, uh, and they're true, but they're missing the boat. Right, and because they have some advantages that those independ that those large pizza chains don't have. What do you think those are? Uh, the ability to interact with the customer. That's it. Yeah. They can offer customer service. Yeah. If you own Brian's Pizza. Yeah. You can deliver a dining experience to each of your customers in a way that Domino's can never touch. Fair enough. Agreed? Yeah, 100%. So if that's, so you can either sit all day and bellyache and complain that, you know, you don't have national advertising and you don't have the same kind of buying power. Uh, in which you might, might as well get out of business if that's how you're going to handle it. Right. Or you get your mind right and you get, you, you think about, okay, where can I be strong where they're weak instead of always complaining at the parts where they're strong where I'm weak? Absolutely. And so that's my message to these independent pizza shops and restaurants is, hey, and uh, I, I know a guy, I, I'll give you one example, uh, a guy I know who owns a, uh, an ice cream shop and he's complaining, oh, you know, Baskin Robbins, kick them out. Uh, I don't have the same advantages that they have. And I'm like, yeah, but here's what you have is independent business ownership. Yeah. And uh, I said, uh, here's what I would do if I were in your shoes. And uh, this is like a, a frozen custard shop, right? That's uh, it's seasonal. It's only open in the, in the summertime and there's no indoor dining. It's just a patio full of customers. I said, I swear, his name's Dale. Yeah. Dale, if I was in your shoes, here's what I'd be doing with my time. Uh, every night I would be out on that patio shaking hands and kissing babies like I was running for Congress. There you go. And I would be going up to every single person and saying, hey, how's, that, how's your custard? Is it good? Yeah. Hey, my name's Dale. Yep. I own this store. It means a lot to me that you came and got ice cream here. Sure. I know there's a lot of places you could go to buy ice cream and you came here and I appreciate it. It means a lot to me personally. Hope you come back soon. Bring some of your friends, would you? Absolutely. And, uh, and, and that's what he started doing. What, by the way, what's the cost of that? Uh, absolutely nothing. Zero cost. Yeah. Um, or... Dale, you can go inside and like yell at the people, uh, you need to wipe up better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something stupid. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or, um, or, or, or go down and I'm going to try to shop around. I'm going to go to, you know, to 10 different stores to try to save money on ice cream cones. Sure. Like an idiot. Right. Right. Or you can grow your business. You can get loyal customers. And now what you've done is made those people partners in what you do. Hmm. Right. So I think that, if, again, if I was, if I was running a, a lawn care business and I had, you know, if it was just me or one to five employees, I'd be looking for ways that I could find people who want to partner in what I do. Sure. And, uh, and you do it by telling stories. This, uh, this almost sounds like word of mouth marketing though, too, you know, to me, like you can empower these people to market for you. And, you know, like you said, you can't compete on some of these different levels cause you don't have the resources, but we still talk about, you can have that high touch, uh, connection point with your customers. And, and honestly, a lot of us, we just get so busy though. We know we gotta cut the lawn. We gotta cut the lawn. We gotta do the landscaping job. Right. But we, I always try to, uh, tell these guys and teach these guys. And I, I try to do the same, exact same thing. Take time for the customer. The customer is life. The customer is everything. Now, sometimes customers are buttheads too, right? Let's be honest. Right. But, but at the end of the day, take time because your, your business is a small business owner. It's like guerrilla warfare. It's like guerrilla marketing, right? So is this what you're saying with getting new customers and trying to have that, that personal touch with telling stories? Yeah. It's, it's about getting customers and even more importantly, keeping customers. Okay. Talk about that. Cause that sounds okay. like a better segue. Yeah. Cause, cause getting customers is a challenge, but you know, and, and I do, I do a lot of work with like uh, 
big companies and their salespeople. Sure. I was just out in California doing some training for Dole Pineapple. And these are the people that, I mean, they have the biggest, the biggest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world. Okay. Uh, and yet they, they have a team that they pay to go out and to sell their products to restaurants and to hospitals and to, in the school districts. And, uh, and so I'm doing some training for these people and where, where most of the battle happens with any kind of sales group, whether it's an independent, you know, it's at the vendor level. Okay. Right. That uh, I'm a vendor, I'm offering a product or a service. And, um, you know, if all you're offering to your customers is getting your lawn cut. Okay. That's a commodity. Sure. And if that's all you're offering me is you're going to cut my lawn. Right. Well, then I'm going to find who's going to cut my lawn for the cheapest price. There you go. And this battle happens on price, right? Well, I can do it for a dollar less. And um, now here's what all the research shows that most people, the number one reason that they purchase something, a product or a service is almost never price. Okay. And I ask people, name, name one thing on your body or in this studio that you bought exclusively because it was the cheapest option available. In this studio, nothing. Nothing. No. Any of your equipment that you bought, that you bought it because it was the cheapest? No. No. Now, is price a factor? 100%. But it's not the number one factor. What's and, what's the number one factor? Well, the number one, you know, if you're buying equipment, a product, it has to do with things like value, right? How long that how long that's going to last? Okay. Um, the, the low maintenance, is it going to help you get a job done faster? Like what it can do for you? Sure. Um, I think if you're selling a service, right, that's a whole nother thing that people, if you can move from a vendor to some type of a partner, I'm convinced that people want to be part of something. Hmm. They just do. The softball fields all over Metro Detroit are full tonight of people who just want to be on a team. There you go. Actually, maybe maybe not allowing people to play softball right now. <laughs> Michigan is <laughs> <We're not sure>. still <laughs> under the uh, the thumb of uh, our governor. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> governor's cracking. Do you guys way. have freedom in Ohio, or how does this work? Uh, we have a little bit more. A little bit more. Uh, but you know, even our governor is a little drunk with power. Yeah. You know, yeah. power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And. Um, I think people are learning right now, this is off the subject a little bit, that yeah. uh, who you vote for for the governor of your state is just as important as who you vote for for president, if not more so. Uh, amen. Because they have more control over your life. Amen. Especially if you're a business owner. Yeah. Awkward. But um, <laughs> Awkward moment. Uh, but, but, but it's the no, truth. We're, we dealt with that firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. But people, people want to be part of something. And, you know, a, a story that I tell sometimes that, you know, you may have heard is um, uh, a young lady, I think her name was uh, Marquita. And she was a Girl Scout and okay. she was selling Girl Scout cookies. Everyone's familiar with selling Girl Scout cookies, Sure, right? sure. And uh, so she was, you know, eight years old and uh, her mom was a single mom and their dad had left and her mom worked at a restaurant and uh, trying to save money, you know, and they, but this, this little girl, Marquita, wanted to travel. That was her dream. Well, she goes to a Girl Scout meeting and they say, hey, uh, we're going to sell cookies, right? That's what they do. Sure. That's what the Girl Scouts really is. It's, it's a uh, cookie selling pyramid scheme. <laughs> but they... Uh, uh, and they, they sell a lot of cookies. They make a lot of money. And they make a lot of money. Yeah, and yeah. they do a lot of good with that money too. Sure. But uh, but they, she went to a meeting and they said, hey, you know, we're going to have some prizes for whoever in the troop sells the most cookies. Uh, and if our troop uh, sells more than any other one in the region, we're going to get a pizza party. Uh, but whatever girl in the country who sells the most cookies, sure, they get a cruise with their parents Oh, wow. Around the world. Have you heard this story? Uh, I have not. Okay. So this girl's like, aha. Huh. Okay. She had a dream. She had a burning desire. I want that cruise. I want to win. Okay. I want to travel with my mom. I'm going to win this cruise. Uh, what she did, though, was fascinating. Is that, you know, most girls selling Girl Scout cookies, what do they do? They put their outfit on. They go knock on a door. Yeah. Someone opens it, and they say, you want some cookies? Would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and people do. Some people buy them because they love the cookies. Right, right, right. Some people buy them because they want to support the little girl. Sure. Some people buy them because they're guilty and they, 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 they don't know how to say no. Yeah. That's part of it. <laughs> That's usually me. I'm like, I hey, have 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I thin men's whatever. I don't even know. Right. I don't like girls go count cookies. Yeah. But well, here's 20 bucks. Well, here's what this girl did. Uh, a different approach. Okay. That uh, is like kind of the cornerstone, this concept to a lot of the selling training I do which is she, uh, she got all dressed up in her Girl Scout outfit. She went and knocked on a door, and they answered, and she said, Hi, my name's Marquita, and I have a dream. Hmm. And my dream is to take my mom on a cruise around the world. Wow. And I'm here to ask you to invest in my dream. Hmm. Would you like to invest in one dozen or two dozen boxes of cookies? Wow. Wow. What and do you say to that? People <laughs> said, I'll take one dozen. Wow. 
And in two weeks, she sold uh, 8,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. What? Shattered the world record, took her mom on a cruise around the world, and then became a 13-year-old motivational speaker training <laughs> corporate executives on how to position, mm. right? That, that What she tapped into was the fact that people want to help people. Okay. Now, let's, let, now here's what's interesting. That story happened like in the early 1980s. Wow. Little Marquita's older than I am. <laughs> she's, she's in her fifties now and probably right. probably has grandchildren. Right. Uh, but let's but I think that story is still true. Sure. And the fact that everyone doesn't do that now is bizarre. Right. Right? Because uh, that's anything I've ever sold, that's how I sell is hey, you know, that I'm if I if I'm a, a, a lawn care uh, business operator, you're coming to those customers with an opportunity for them to support a small business owner. I like that. I let's, like that a lot. Hey, let's talk about twenty twenty. Yeah. Um in call space paid, what's been going on is that the government has shut down all the small businesses around America. They've, yep. uh, you know, all the, all the volumes go into Walmart and Amazon yeah. and, uh, the big box stores. And that's by design because yep. those are the companies that support those politicians with the lobbies. Yep. But people see that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I think people in every state and maybe, you know, I know you got people all around the world that sure, watch this, but sure. a lot of people in Michigan and, uh, I, I, I think we're going to be moving into a phase for yep. the next, 12 months to 24 months where people are going to be desperate. Maybe isn't even too strong of a word to support small business owners I like that instead of the big companies. Sure. And so if I was a guy who owned a, a lawn care business and I was like, man, now is the time to make, Hey, now yep. is the opportunity of your lifetime to go talk to somebody and however you do it, if it's not on people still knock on doors, is yeah. that still how you do it? Flyers, postcards, marketing, whatever flyers, works. postcards, emails, whatever you do. And my and people say, Oh, that's corny. Right. A corny sells. Well, you know what? One thing I want to ask you about is price. Because you said that a lot of people don't make decisions on price. And we always try to talk about having high rates, having high profit margins. Um, uh, a lot of times when we go to talk to customers, uh, we don't... Uh, just, you know, send a random contract out or a random bid, right? We want to go have a conversation in person to be able to tell that story, right? Uh, we're going to take a quick sip of water here, change it up for uh, just a quick second. Uh, we're going to hear from the show sponsors again, but then I want to pressure you a little bit more about this price conversation because uh, I remember you saying once that uh, if you get over the price thing and you start communicating value and relationship, people will almost pay anything. And when they believe in you, like you just talked about with that dream, uh, price very rarely actually comes up. So let's do this. Let's I'll take a quick second here. We're going to hear from the show sponsors one more time, and then we're going to come right on back. All right, guys, we're back here. Just want to say a quick uh, thank you to all the show sponsors that bring you guys a show Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And of course, thank you to Marty, Mr. Producer for quarterback in this thing. Can't do it without him. Uh, so Jeff, I want to go back to talking about price, because one thing I learned at one of your conferences a while back was uh, something you just uh, mentioned was if you sell somebody on price and the next guy comes and does it for a dollar cheaper or five dollars cheaper or or whatever, um, you're going to always be playing that constant have to get new customers game. Right. Um, and then number two, what happens when the economy slows down? What happens if the economy speeds up um, and there's more competition, less competition? People start asking about price. Uh, you were talking once at a conference that if you have a relationship with somebody, that's going to transcend all these different variables that's going on in the country. Is this? Do you remember this talk? It was way back in the day, but yeah, no, I hundred percent agree. And I don't know to some of you guys, it sounds a weird thing when you're talking about a relationship with a customer. Cause some of you guys, the reason you got into mowing lawns is cause you didn't want to have relationships. <laughs> sure. You didn't want to be working in customer service. You didn't want to be working in sales. Put the headphones on all day and you're good to uh, go. Right. But as soon as you stepped into the world of being a business owner, Ooh, well, now all bets are off, right? Because yeah. if you're a business owner, that's the hardest job in America. Sure. Right. Because now all of a sudden you got to know a little bit about people and you got to know a little bit about sales and you got to know a little bit about, uh, you know, geography and you got to know a little bit about uh, negotiation and sure. all of it. And if you're too lazy to become good at those things, then you should go get a job mowing lawns for somebody else. Amen. Amen. Instead of owning your own business. And so, um, yeah, but this, the battle on price, I'm telling you, I, and I see people all in, in every industry, every industry, yeah. where they're like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to come in. I'm going to try to steal that business by going, you know, a dollar cheaper. Yep. And the truth is any business that you gain on price, you're going to lose on price. Say that one more time, real quick. Any, any, any customer that you get with price, you're going to lose on price. So what does that mean? I, I'll give you an analogy. My, okay. my, my teenage daughters, uh, I've had conversations with them about, you know, if you try to get, uh, if you try to get a guy yeah. by being sexy, there's always going to be somebody sexier. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Somebody else. If, if you, if you get a guy with your body, you're going to lose that guy because of the body. That's not the guy you want. Okay. And, and I think customers are like that too. You don't want every customer necessarily. 
And uh, are there a percentage of customers in any industry that buy exclusively on price? Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yes, there are. Are there some that get a morbid thrill out of pitting you against somebody else sure, and sure. seeing how low they can get it? We've all yeah. been there. Yeah. There are people that do that. But here's my question. Here's my, my belief. There's not as many of those as you think. And you're never going to move the needle and get to the promised land with those customers anyway. Well, because you're not going to have good margins. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to put yourself right out of business. And right. so, hey, if you have an opportunity to underbid somebody and get a business, you know, get some, take what you can get. But that's not, you are fooling yourself if, if even 30% of your customers are people that are doing business with you because you're the cheapest. Wow. I mean, the, the, the model of being the cheapest, right? One of, the, one of the analogies I use with a lot of businesses is look at the hotel business, right? You got lots of different hotel chains that have different strategies. Sure. You, got, you got the Ritz Carlton does pretty well. You got Holiday Inn does pretty well. You got uh, the Marriott that does pretty well. Sure. Uh, but they all do something different, right? Uh, what does Marriott do? Marriott uh, caters to business travelers. Okay. Right? We're going sure. to give, give you a lot of points. Here's what, here's what Marriott knows, that the people that are coming to stay there control the decision on where they stay, but it's not their money. There you go. <laughs> so they give you a lot of points. Yeah, right, right, right. Because right. the company's paying for it, right? Then you got a holiday in that their thing is uh, families, right? Kids eat free. Come on in. Uh, you got the Ritz-Carlton, which is, uh, you service. know, luxury service. You yep. got Motel 6, which is just cheap. Yep. Uh, so which of those models is the best model? Uh, I would have to say all of them because they all work. Right. They all work as long as they stay in their lane, right? Sure. If Motel 6 starts trying to offer... Ritz Carlton type service, they're uh, going to go out of business. Sure. If Ritz Carlton starts trying to, you know, the prices of Motel Six, they're going to go out of business. Sure. So you got to decide what do you want. And if I was running a, a lawn care business, what I would want are steady, consistent, loyal customers. Right. And one of the things I do, uh, I talk to a lot of businesses about, and this, this hmm. is related to price. I don't know if this is answering your question or not, but um, but I, I challenge people all the time that if, if you want to have a permanent business. I do a talk called Tattooing Your Customers. Okay. And it's based on a study I read where they ask consumers, are there any brands you love enough that you would get them tattooed on your arm? Wow. And, and people, there were some brands that people said yes. What, yeah. do, you, what do you think some of them were? Uh, believe it or not, in our industry, steel, like steel chainsaws. Okay. There's people that have steel chainsaw There's tattoos. people that would love that, right? Yeah, 100%. No, number one in this study was Harley Davidson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, fair, fair. Part of it is that their core audience are people that are Likely to get tattoos. Well, I mean, Superman, Batman, I've seen that. Yeah, and Nike. Yeah. Uh, the, the study they did, uh, Google, Absolute Vodka. I mean, there's different brands that people are just totally loyal to. And, uh, you know, and the question is, does anyone have your company's brand tattooed on their, you know, <laughs> maybe not. But that's, no. but that's what we're looking for is permanent people who love what you do. Wow. And, um, and one of the challenges I do all the time when I'm talking to whether it's business owners or business to business salespeople, I challenge them, you know, if you really want to move the needle, you want to double or triple your sales and income this year. And, and by the way, you, you triple your income by doubling your sales. Sure. Uh, is I, I challenge people to get rid of your satisfied customers. What do you mean by that? Get rid of your satisfied customers. Your satisfied customers are killing you. And uh, what I mean by that is people have a misconception that unsatisfied and satisfied are two ends of a spectrum. Okay. That's not how it works. Okay. Right? Um, unsatisfied, and here's why. What happens to unsatisfied customers? What do they become real fast? Uh, I don't know. Former customers? Okay, okay. Right? The customers of your business who are unsatisfied, how easy is it for them to switch to somebody else? Oh, yeah, and they're unhappy. They're gone. Unhappy customers go away fast. Okay. And so unhappy, I mean, that's so satisfied is like the worst you got. Okay. What's a better kind of customer? If you were looking to describe your customers, what's better than a satisfied customer? Uh, what would you say? A, a, a fan, a zealot. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and what I would say, there's a step in between there, which is loyal. Okay. Okay. Loyal. Right. Looking for a loyal customer. Would you rather have a loyal customer or a satisfied customer? Well, a loyal customer. Yeah. And I do, you know, one example that I use, I uh, was uh, speaking at a conference in uh, Wisconsin and I stopped for breakfast at an IHOP at, in Brown Deer, Wisconsin. And, you know, I have my breakfast and you know what? Mm, okay. Sure. And um, I get up to the cash register. <laughs> this teenage girl working the cash register, she looks at me and she goes, is everything okay? <laughs> wow. And I go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that exactly describes my experience at your restaurant. <laughs> it was profoundly okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do I want to come back? Not yeah. anytime soon. <laughs> uh, am I going to go to their Facebook page and like it? Mm. 
no, the same thing happens at hotels, right? I, I, I stay at a I, last hotel I stayed at was at a Courtyard Marriott, and uh, it was in uh, Naples, Florida. And when I was checking out, they said, uh, "Sir, was your stay satisfactory?" Oh, what do you think I said? I mean, meh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's satisfactory. The TV worked. Uh, was that there three was, out there of five? Was, there was hot shower, hot water in the shower. <laughs> it was. Okay. Yeah. Am I raving about it? Right. Am I telling my friends, hey, if you're looking for a vacation. Courtyard. The Courtyard Marriott in <laughs> Naples, Florida. Woo! <laughs> it's okay. And so I'm not looking for satisfied. You know, here's an analogy I use. Uh, you and I are both married. Yeah. Um, if uh, if I asked your wife, say, hey, tell me about Brian. And she said, eh. <laughs> eh he'll, uh, he'll, he'll do. Well, that's why she's not on the podcast. <laughs> We got two mics tonight. If you ask my wife, hey, what do you think about Jeff? And she goes, ah, he's okay. Yeah. I would be very concerned. <laughs> I am not looking for satisfied. Uh, you know, although some of you guys, hey, sign yeah. you up for the satisfied wife yeah. program. Yeah. That's, a, that's a step in the right direction. We're making progress. But what I'm looking for is loyal. And I, I think that's where you want to be is, is thinking about how many of your cousins. I used to work in business to business sales. I worked for the Campbell Soup Company. My job was selling food products yeah. in the food service industry. Okay. And when I learned this idea, and I read it in a book. I don't even remember what book it was from. I, sure. didn't make, I didn't make this up. Sure. But I was like, huh, huh. And I started thinking about like, uh, you know, and, and if I had some, uh, you know, just average lawn care business over uh, off the street, I'd say, uh, and, I, and I ask people this all the time in every kind of business. Um, hey, if I got 10 of your customers and I asked them if they were satisfied, what percentage of them would say they're satisfied? Ooh, uh, what do you think the answer is? Uh, I mean, 10 out of 10 would be satisfied. Are they loyal, raving ma mavericks? Right. You know? The answer to the satisfied question is... The statistical answer is um, three about uh, nine and a half percent, about nine, about ninety five percent. Really? Okay. People say they're satisfied. Okay. When they're asked that with an existing customer service. Okay. I had a, uh, a guy who's the president of a big company one time call me up and like, hey, come meet in my office and <clears throat> thinking about hiring me to do some training for his sales sure. force. And he said, hey, I got a question for you. He goes, all right, Mr. Motivational Speaker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He goes, here's my question. He goes, we survey our customers and ask them if they're satisfied, and we score very high. Okay. He goes, and yet we lose customers every day. Oh, wow. Every day of the year, we lose customers. But when we ask them if they're satisfied, yeah. we score very high. Sounds like the airlines or something. And I said, uh, <laughs> I said, this this guy was this guy. I mean, he was he was a big shot yeah. in his field. Yeah. And I said, let me guess. When you survey your customers and ask them if they're satisfied, you get between ninety and ninety five percent that say they're satisfied. He goes, oh my god, ninety three point three percent. How did you know that? Wow. I said, because I'm a highly paid genius consultant. That's why. <laughs> I didn't tell him that every cust every company in every industry that surveys their customers mm. and asks them if they're satisfied gets that same answer. Wow. And the dumb ones brag about it on TV. Yeah. Nine out of 10 Ford owners would buy a Ford. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they have a Ford. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. What yeah. dumb question is that? Or, you know, does it a lot is the cell phone industry. Oh, yeah. Right? 94% of Verizon customers would recommend Verizon. Yeah, because they have Verizon, didn't they? Right, 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 right. Because someone who's not <laughs> satisfied with Verizon, sure. what can they become in less than an hour? A and, former Verizon customer. Sure, sure. And so uh, so the idea, so when this whole idea came to me that, oh, I'm, I need to be shooting for something better than satisfied customers. So I, huh. I did an initiative and I literally did this. I started going to my customers and I said, hey, I um, want to tell you about some news. Uh, we're doing a new program at Campbell's. It's called Get Rid of Our Satisfied Customers. Okay. We're getting rid of all of our satisfied customers. And they're like, okay. I said, and we're replacing them with wowed loyal, raving fan customers. Okay. And I asked him, what could I do different that would make you one of those? Wow. So you're asking this to the customer? I asked this to the customer. Okay. And most of them said, "I, you're doing a great job. Okay. I said, awesome. Yeah. But if you ever see a way that I could add some more value to what you do, would you please tell me? Is there okay. value in it? Yeah. I had a few of them that were like, um, since you asked. Oh, wow. Uh, I wish you'd come here at a different time of day. You always come when we're really busy. Oh, wow. I'm like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. I'm glad I asked. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, or um, you wow, know, what one customer said. Uh, yeah, actually, since you asked, uh, we're getting ready to change to a totally different supplier. I said, why? She goes, because your trucks are dirty. Huh? I go, what? She goes, the truck that comes here to deliver stuff, it's dirty. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so I make a phone call and I'm like, send. It's one of my biggest customers. Yeah. Send the clean truck to that yeah, customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, 
And so, yeah, so I think that you're looking wow. for not better than satisfied is loyal. Better than loyal is a raving fan, yep. right? That's yep. somebody, um, I call them an apostle. Okay. Somebody who so loves what you do that they spread the good news. Sure. And if you can start getting those. So when I ask people, what percentage of your customers are satisfied? It's 95%. What percentage of them are loyal? Wow. That when someone else comes and says, hey, I got a coupon for it. They're like, no, 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 no. I'm already working with Brian. I, 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 sure. I, have, I have a landscaping partner. Wow. Okay, awesome. That's great. Even better are the people that are out there. And you've had people, I guarantee you, yeah. you have people that tell their friends, yeah. hey, you're looking for something. You know who does a great job is Brian and his team. Yep. Awesome. So if you shoot for that, wow, you're going to get some of the other ones. And to the degree, this is true in every business, the more value you add, the less price matters. You agree? Mm, yeah, a hundred percent. Because they're your partner, like you said earlier. Right now, if that's true, that the more value you add, the less price matters. The converse of that is also true, which is if you don't add any value, all that's left is price. So you have no equity, yeah. And so I get people complaining to me all the time, like, "Well, I lost that customer. Why'd you lose it? Price? Oh, right. My competitor came in with a lower price. Mm. I go, sounds like you're bad at what you do. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, if right. you're losing business on price, that's not an excuse. That's an indictment. That what you do is so ordinary and so average that the customer doesn't care if they work with you or somebody else. Sure. Right? These are the customers that don't know your names. You're the long guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a customer that's calling you the long guy, yeah. you, that's not a customer. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> not for very long anyway, right? Right. And, uh, and, so, and so that's the question is, well, what do they value? I think in today's world that there are people that value working with a small independent business owner. Uh, what do people value? They value when somebody asks their opinion. Right. Right. When somebody asks for feedback. I do a lot of training in the restaurant business, and it's shocking how few restaurant owners give two hoots what their customers think. Sure. They never, never ask. And, or they'll put a little comment thing yeah. out there and they don't even read them. At best, you get a table touch. You know, the manager walks over, he's half stoned. He doesn't even care. You know, yeah. he's like, he's like, what do you guys, you guys have a good uh, dinner tonight? I'm like, you actually would, John, this is funny. Try this next time. This is a little fun one I do. I go, it was awful. And they go, yeah, absolutely. Have a great night. Yeah. So thanks for coming in. And then like, they walk away. I go, you're not even listening. Right. You're not even there. Now he's getting paid, you know, $12 an hour to right. be there. He doesn't care either. I, I call that the manager flyby. Hey, how's everything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah good, good. Great. Say great. it's awful next go time. Go the next table. Hey, how's everything? Good. Good. Great. 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 But uh, they did it. You know, I, I've worked with with some restaurants that have like uh, like sat down with their you know in, in, in all kinds of industries yeah hey what could we do better and, and to go knock on a door or to or to follow up with an email or however you do it most people have gotten wise to the fact that m a lot of those how are we doing outreaches yeah it's just marketing right right right. Um, it's, it's the same thing with the, you know, leave a comment. That's really, they're trying to capture your email address is right. what they want. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Uh, but to have, but, but sincerely with a customer you have, right, you go get customer. But I, I think the name of the game is keeping customers. I, absolutely. Right. That, you know, man, to have a customer over a long period of time that isn't price sensitive, that they love working with you. And even with those, here's what you can do with those, cu those customers is you can go have a conversation and say, hey, I love working. I love mowing your lawn. I love working with your business. I love doing your snow Absolutely. removal, whatever. Uh, but we're facing some economic headwinds and we're going to have to raise prices. Sure. And I know you don't like that and I don't like that. I even hate having this conversation with you. Right. Uh, but if we don't raise prices, I'm going to be out of business. Right. And then you're going to be stuck with some horrible person that doesn't even care. Right about you and your business. Right. And so I just want to let you, and 95% of customers say, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I get that's happening where they work too. Wow. It, it's funny. Like you, you you're, you're uh, I guess on our podcast. Um, I, I don't expect that you've listened to like the last hundred episodes, you know what I mean? By any means, but I talked, uh, um, uh, this is actually a really good story that we talked about in a previous episode. And a lot of folks sent me a lot of DMS on Instagram. They said that was a really good story. And I had this customer for 10, 12 years and I had to raise my price by, I think like three or $4 a week. So it was $16 a month. It was a $30 cut that I wanted to take the 34. And he said, no, I can get somebody to do it for 25. And I said, uh, well, uh, sure, but they're not gonna do what I do. And you have a 15 year old daughter and a 13 year old daughter on your property. And they're jumping on the trampoline. They're hanging out, having fun. They know me, I know them, we wave. I've seen these girls grow up, right? I've been a customer of his for 10 years. And the bottom line is that $90,000 Range Rover in the driveway, beautiful suburban in the driveway and the whole deal. And I'm thinking to myself, he goes, no, nope, 25 bucks. I go, it's going to be 30 this year. Uh, in fact, it should be 34, but I'm doing you a favor. He goes, nah, 25 bucks. And I go, uh, so I'm at a value trying to just communicate this to him. And I'm like, I'm not getting through. Right. And, and sometimes this happens and I go, 
uh, his name is Sam. And I said, Sam, I said, uh, you own a restaurant. I said, you own a restaurant just down the road. I said, if your chicken tenders went from $11.99 for a basket of chicken tenders and french fries and some ranch to $12.99, I wouldn't care about the extra dollar. I'm su- not supporting, you know, I'm not buying chicken tenders and French fries. I'm supporting your business. And this guy just didn't reciprocate. He didn't get it. And I'm like, and every time I talk to him off the record, every time I talk to him, business is horrible. Oh, I can't believe this. Nobody's coming in. Restaurant's not making money. Da, 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 da. He's like, dude, he's like, man, you need some investors in the landscape company. I can cut grass with you, man. You want to take this thing big time? I go, no, we're good, Sam. I don't need any of your support or invest. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I'm like, Sam, I'm, I'm there on your property, your company, like you feel safe. We're mowing the, gr- the lawn every week. You feel comfortable, like we're predictable, reliable. And he just didn't, get, he just didn't connect. And it was just super frustrating. And I'm like, all right, I, I had to know that I've done everything I can to add value to this gentleman, but he was driven by price at the end of the day. I just realized, what am I building my business on? I don't want to be building my business. I had a couple people that kind of filtered through the cracks. Uh, they didn't get, they got past the barrier where they were still price point driven, not partnership driven. And That's exactly right. And had you said, oh, okay, 25. Yeah. Uh, now he gets a little buzz. Oh, I negotiated him down. I, right. Um, but now you're, you're, you're not making profit on that customer. Not so at now all. Now you're stealing from your family and from your business to right. go waste time because you were, because you didn't have the balls to tell him. Exactly. Hey, what I do is valuable. Yeah. I don't apologize for it. A hundred percent. Right. Um, you know, I, I heard a story recently like, hey, how come you never see uh, ads on TV for Ferraris and Lamborghinis? Right. And it's like, well, because those people that buy those don't watch TV. <laughs> exactly. Right. 100%. They're, they're, that, uh, that they're paying a premium price because right. they want to. Right. Right. That's the weird thing about the public speaking industry, too, is that there's people that they want to pay more. Right. Right. That they're like, hey, we hired this guy and it cost 25000 How awesome is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, uh, give me those people, right? Those yeah. are my customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, let's hook up some of them. But yeah, but this, you know, it's, I, I think we are, we, we are living in an experience economy that that's what people want is an experience. I like that. And, and I use restaurants a lot as an example because everybody's eating at a restaurant. Sure. And, and I'll do training sometimes where I'll have an audience of a hundred, 200, 500 people. And I'll say, Hey, think about, you know, your experiences as a food service patron, you go to a restaurant Sure. and I'll ask them, Hey, uh, who's ever had a great experience at a restaurant? And a bunch of hands go up. And I'm like, share with me. Yeah. Oh, we went there and we had reservations for three, but we showed up at 12 and they, they made it work. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I asked for something that wasn't quite on the menu and it was something they said, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll make that right. Sure. Uh, we brought, they brought the food out and it wasn't what we wanted. And they said, oh, we'll take care of that. And they brought us some free dessert. Right. And no matter where I go in the country, uh, old people, young people, white people, black people, poor people, rich people, I get the exact same answers. What's that? Uh, that are, uh, that they did these things, you know, they, they did all these things for us. Like, okay, what about a bad experience you've had? Mm. Who's had a bad, oh, all the hands go up. I right, had a bad right, experience. Right. Tell me about it. Oh, I asked for this and they rolled their eyes and said they couldn't do it. Um, oh, we, we, we waited for 30 minutes before they sat us or they sat us and they never brought their, one, one lady yeah. said, Recently, a lady goes, they, they, uh, they sat us down. They took our order. They never brought our food. 40 minutes later, they brought the check and said, how was everything? <laughs> That's pretty bad. Nobody wants to be ignored. No, no, no. Right? And, uh, but here's what's interesting. I have asked that question to um, probably 200 audiences around the country in at wow. least 40 states. And you know what nobody ever, ever mentions when I ask them to tell me about their good experience or bad experience at a restaurant? Mm. The taste of the food. Right, right, right. The reason you go to a restaurant is for food. Yeah. But what makes it a memorable experience, wow. memorable good yeah. or memorable bad, huh. is not the food, it's how they made you feel. Right, right, right. They made me feel great. Hmm. And so... That's really, really good. So that's the magic. So is it, how can we deliver an experience that makes them feel great? And I, I talk to restaurant owners sometimes and I'm like, hey, there's a magic moment. You want to get some raving fans? Right. Here's what it is, is when you close every night, when you close your restaurant and somebody, you close at 10. Yeah. And somebody comes at 10.03. Yeah. And they rattle the door. Right. Oh, rats, they're closed. There you go. Right. And what do most restaurant owners do? Oh, we're close. Sorry, we're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, here's what you do instead. You go and you go, hey, got some good news. got some bad news. Yeah. Uh, the bad news is we're close. We're close at 10 o'clock. The, right. o- the ovens are turned off. We're cleaning up. Here's the good news. As soon as you showed up here, you're my customer now. Yeah. And you're not going home hungry. Okay. What can I whip up for you? A salad or a sandwich or something? Wow. Uh, and, and you know what? Um, 
about 70% of people are going to say, oh, no, that's cool. I, I didn't know you closed at 10, but yeah. hey, that's awesome. Thank wow. you. You do that for me? Yeah. And you say, hey, come back. Come, yeah. come back. And, uh, you know, and, uh, but, but for the 30% who go, yeah, you know what? I love a salad. Sure. Awesome. We're going to be here for an hour cleaning up anyway. Yeah. And you just got an opportunity to get a raving fan. What's that person wow. going to be talking about tomorrow? Oh, all over Facebook. Can't believe this place stayed open for me. Yeah. And so hey, let's talk about the lawn care business. Um, if someone's angry enough about their lawn care service that they're going to go online and bitch about it. Right. Um, is it because the lines weren't straight? Right. Is it because they said they were going to pull all the weeds and I found four weeds? <laughs> sure. Is that what they're complaining about? No. No. They're complaining about somebody showed up. They were surly. Right. They were rude. Right. Um, I called. Nobody called me back. Mm. It's I just the, saw that earlier today. It's the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the experience. People want a good experience with the people they're giving money for, and they will pay good money for a great experience. Right. Well, wh one thing uh, I, a lot of guys uh, that listen in, they're like, how do you get ratings? How do you get reviews? Right. Um, not on the podcast, which we do appreciate. If you guys haven't hit five star, do five star. Wah, 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 wah. Little plug there, right? If you guys watch on YouTube, big thumbs up if you guys appreciate Jeff and have all the nuggets he's dropping. Um, but a lot of times people are like, well, nobody's giving me a five star review on Yelp or a five star review on my uh, Facebook page. And maybe they're not happy. Maybe they're not sad. They're satisfied, but they're not a raving fan. I like what you just talked about because something that's really practical that we can walk away from is call up your customers and just say, hey, how are we doing? How are we doing? Is there anything we can change? Anything we can improve upon? And when they say absolutely no, because they're an absolutely loyal raving fan, then go in for the kill shot and say, hey, how about leaving us a five-star review? But you're asking them for a five-star review without even knowing if your service is actually five stars. Yeah, it's exactly right. You're assuming that you're five stars when you might actually be at three. They might be satisfied, but how many times do we go ask for the for the you know? Can I just get a five star review? They're like, well, no, and they never find time, right, Jeff? They never find time. Yeah, and you're like, well, that's really weird. They said they were you know, going to do it. I, I bought a car once. I bought a, a Chevy Trailblazer years ago, and they're like, and uh, the manager set me down. I bought a brand new Trailblazer. Sure. And uh, he goes, hey, just so you know, you're going to get a survey in the mail. From General Motors. Uh, oh, they, they live on these. Right. They live goes, on these. And he goes, hey, we need you to give us five stars. Yeah. And so you better do that. Yeah. You bet. I mean, this guy like was, was like. I went through the exact experience two years ago. He's twisting my arm. <laughs> and, uh, I can get fired if I don't get five. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you know what? That's just, you're getting four right now for being kind of a jerk about this whole thing. <laughs> right? That, yeah. um, as opposed to that same conversation is so much easily could have said, Hey, you know, what's, it's really important to us to make sure that everyone we do business with loves what we do. Right. It's really, really important to us. Yeah. And so, uh, if there's any part of this process that you're not happy with, here's my phone number. Yeah. Would you please call me and wow. I, I will do whatever I can to make it right. And if you, if they did that to you, how would you have responded? Yeah. And I'd be like, Oh, that's awesome. Five star. They say, Oh, and by the way, yeah. you're going to get a survey. Yeah. Um, if there's something that's less than five star, call you know, me first. It would mean, it would mean a lot to me. Yeah. This is my phrase. It, it would mean a lot to me. I think in any kind of customer service, people that like own it and aren't afraid to ask for it. Right. And, and for you to be talking to your customers and, and yeah, you don't just say it would mean a lot to me if you give me a good review. Right. I mean, you lead, like you said, that groundwork a little bit that, you know, it would mean a lot to me if you loved being our customer. Absolutely. I mean, that would mean a lot to me personally. Well, and, and, and by the way, the opposite is true too, that if, if you were unhappy with one part of how we do business and you didn't right. tell me, that would break my heart. Wow. And, and I, I, I like that. I like that. People, I say like that. people think it's corny, yeah. but I'm telling you, people are like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, what, when we sign up a new customer, I, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's an aeration or an overseeding or we start, we do uh, mowing and it's the first mow. When we leave, I always say, I, I call them, I leave them a message because usually they're not picking up. They're doing something. I say, hey, we just got done. If there's anything we missed or you didn't like, let us know. We'll come back. It, sometimes we get a property. It's a D minus. I'm like, hey, we're not going to get A on the first round. We'll get it back to a B plus. Next week, it'll be A. I, this is, that's my line. You can tell I've said it before, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, we'll get it back to a B plus. It'll be A from here on out. But if there's anything we missed or anything you don't like, give me a shout. We'll make sure it's right. I just want to make sure you're happy because here's what we got. If Once I uh, establish that standard moving forward, we never have to have any issues, right? And so that's something I do. It's, I, I call it quality assurance checks, right? Hey, how do we do? How do we? How's my guys doing? How are we doing? So that's really, really important. And we're always like, we always want to extract out of the customer. It's like, sow into the customer a little bit. That's exactly right. Because whatever you sow, you're going to get back. That's a law of nature. We call it karma. Call yeah. it the universal law of sowing and reaping. I love it. Uh, it's a fact. Where? And, uh, oh, go ahead. One more nugget. Well, I was going to say the. You know, I mean, there's a million examples of this, but part of it is uh, accessibility, right? Do they feel like if they if they call you, they're going to get somebody who's important? I see a lot. I, I just had a run in with. I, I used to get my hair cut at Sports Clips. Do they have those up here? I think so. Yeah. I probably shouldn't mention the brand. But they're I probably all said, shut down you know, though. Maybe. Yeah. Beep, yeah. yeah. Probably not here. No one's getting their hair yeah, cut. Yeah. Nancy, Nancy Pelosi can go there, but we can't. <laughs> exactly. We can put that on the video. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, 
<laughs> there was a girl who cut my hair. Her name her name's Danielle. She's been cutting my hair for 10 years. Sure. Um, she is awesome. Nice girl. Yep. She's a single mom. Okay. Um, I, 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 we talk about her kids. We talk about my kids. When I show up there, she's like, Hey, how's Logan's YouTube channel going? Hey, Hey, how's Natalie doing? Hey, right. Hey, in Amanda's classes in ASL. She, and, and she makes me feel like I'm her number one customer. Okay. Now, I'm smart enough to know that she makes everyone feel like that. Right, right, right. Well, when you go to sports clips, when you sign in for who do you want to cut your hair? They got a big board. Yeah. It's just like this. And it's so funny when you go in there, it says, Danielle, 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 Danielle. But people will wait two hours. Because they want her. To get Danielle. To, I would too. Wow. If I go in there and there's eight empty chairs, but Danielle's got a two hour wait, sure. I'm like, I'm coming back in two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, every time, every time I get my hair cut, they send out a survey. Um, you know, hey, how'd you do a sports clips? And I'm like, and I answer, it's comical. <laughs> and I found out that she sees these. They oh, get back okay, to her. Okay. So now I'm really yeah. having fun. <laughs> and what do you like about sports clips? I'm like, Danielle. I come there for Danielle. She makes me feel like a million bucks. I look forward to talking to her every month when I come in. If you ever get rid of Danielle, I'm never coming back here again. I'm a, I've told all my friends to come get their haircut by Danielle. I'm not loyal to sports clips. I'm, I'm loyal to Danielle. Wow. That's my, that's my shtick. That's good though. Right. And then when I go in there, she's like, yeah, that's not what you wrote. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. We appreciate and, uh, that. <laughs> well, fast forward uh, a few months ago, Danielle, uh, they fired her. Oh. Conflict with the, ma the manager, I think, who's jealous of Danielle. Right, right, right. Because she's got all the... Uh, ends up firing her. So sure. Danielle calls me and he goes, Hey, heads up. Yeah. I got fired. Oh, wow. I'm like, Hey, you tell me wherever you go. And that's where I'm getting my haircut. Wow. And I don't care how much it costs. Yeah. I don't even know what, whatever it is. That's what wow. I'm going to pay. Cause I'm loyal. I'm, it's, I'm a, I'm a raving fan. Right. I brought about 20 of my friends to get their haircut by Danielle. Wow. I'm literally, I'm like, Hey, who cut your hair? You yeah. Get Danielle. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And, and part of it is because how she makes me feel. Sure. Th th but there is an element that I feel like I'm supporting this single mom and her family. Wow. With the money I spend. I'm going to spend money on a haircut anyway. Right. People are going to spend their money getting their lawn cut anyway. Right. Now, here's an interesting business lesson that goes along with it. Um, I had just bought at, 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 at this chain, Sports Clips, they have a, uh, a frequency thing that you buy that if you buy five haircuts, you get one free. It's yeah, called yeah, yeah. like the season pass or yeah, something. Yeah. I had just bought one of those. Oh. And so I had just <laughs> invested $100 into this little card to get haircuts. Okay. Well, I'm not coming back if Danielle's not going to be there. Right. So I go and talk to the manager and I go, I'd like a refund. She goes, we don't refund those. I go, uh, yeah, you do. She's like, no, we can't. I go, yes, you can. Sure. I said, what if I bought some hair gel here? Can you return it? Click on that little cash register and give me my money back. She's <laughs> like, we, 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 we literally can't. I go, well, who do I need to talk to? Well, the franchise owner. Oh. I go, okay, who's that? His name's Scott. Okay, how do I talk to Scott? You can't talk to Scott. Oh, what? I go, excuse me? What? She goes, you can't talk to him. I go, I'd like, I'd like his phone number. Oh, yeah. And she said, no, I'm not allowed to give that out. Uh. What? <laughs> I go, that's preposterous. He owns this business that I've been patroning for 15 years. And you're telling, I want his phone number. She goes, I can take your phone number and have him call you. Have him call you. Yeah, that always works. And I'm like, okay. And so I said, when's he going to call me? He'll call you in the next 24 hours. Uh, so 48 hours later, I go back in there. Yeah. Hey, where's Scott, Scott? Where's Scott never called me. <laughs> oh, I told him he should call you. I go, well, he didn't. And so I started going in there every day. <laughs> by now it's a principal thing like yeah, this. Yeah. And, and so finally this guy calls me and I go, what the heck, what kind of a business owner are you that you won't let your customers call you? He goes, well, you know, there's, there's over a thousand customers that get their haircut every, every month here. And if I let every disgruntled customer call me up, I'd, all I'd be doing is answering phone calls all day. I go, you got thousands of disgruntled customers. Wow. Well, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this guy, I had been debating him on the phone for an hour and he finally refunded my money like begrudgingly. Yeah. 80 bucks. After I caught him in like five lies. Right. about what. It, and, uh, <laughs> but what an interesting experience that in that one same business, you got one person who's got a raving fan and other people that I don't want to ever do business there again. Right, right, right. And, uh, and so yeah, how you treat these customers, talking to them, letting them know that it's important, that your business is important to them. Another little customer service experience that I had that was relevant to this. I fly a lot, yeah. right? I probably, you know, if you add all the connections and stuff, a couple hundred flights a year. Wow. And, uh, and I kind of, <laughs> and I kind of spread it out between, uh, Delta and United and American and just, you know, wherever's got the best rate usually. Sure, sure. And, um, and they always give you the same spiel, right? You know, in part of their spiel that some either recording is playing. Right. Or some flight attendants, right, is we know you have options when it comes to your flying purchases right, and right. we appreciate you're doing business with the United Airlines. And it's just a road thing that they're reading. And, right. and I've heard it a thousand times. Well, I was um, flying in, when I flew into Phoenix one time, and I was uh, flying American, and the plane lands, and the flight attendant says, hey, real quick, before everybody gets off, the pilot has something he'd like to say. Oh. 
Oh boy. I mean, we landed at this point. Yeah, we're landed. Oh, that's a good then. That got my attention. <laughs> uh, when she didn't say the pilot, she said, Captain Peterson has something he'd like to say. Okay. I'm like, oh. I'm, all, I'm all ears. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, the door opens up and he comes out and uh, he go, he gets the microphone and he goes, hey, I know you guys, there's lots of airlines that you could choose from, um, but I'm so glad you chose this one. Wow. Because uh, this is how I feed my family and take care of my kids. And I just want to tell you, from me to you, personally, it means the world to me that you chose American Airlines. Wow. I really, really, really appreciate it. There you go. And then what do you think happened? I don't know. A clap. The whole airplane starts wow, cheering for Captain go. Peterson. We're like, I can't wait to fly American Airlines again. <laughs> and, and for that little moment, guess what mattered less? Price. Price. Wow. And he doesn't even own that place. No, he, no, no. I'm not even going to ever see him again. He's Maybe. not even going to ever be my pilot yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but boy, that, that there's someone that all of a sudden, instead of, you know, perch, talk about a transactional experience that's right. based on price. Sure. Where are you going to buy a ticket for an airplane? That's the ultimate. It's $2 cheaper over here, so I'm going to do that. Right. right. It's the same experience, but it's not the same experience if you got a whole team of people like Captain Peterson. Wow. And so I think that's the name of the game. And I think whoever is going to own the lawn care business in your community this year and years into the future are the people that are going beyond the transactional vendor. What do you charge and going toward kind of strategic partnerships? And I don't think it's too silly to say I'm going to you don't say these words. This is the spirit. I'm giving you the opportunity partner to partner with me i like that and that uh and, and, and we have the opportunity to be like family over time yeah 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 that um and, and you got to back it up though you got to walk the walk right i mean that's why my my trailer says family owned i mean we are we're small business we're family owned and my family is partnering with your family we appreciate the support a hundred percent without their support we wouldn't be in business and in fact here's how you know if you got really good fans uh and customers uh this is the last thing i'll say uh that i can add to this is back in march we did get shut down right the governor shut us all down we couldn't really do anything um i made a, uh, a newsletter went out to my customers i made a couple of facebook posts i was uh, maybe trolling my governor because i don't agree with her politics and uh, i had customers um not everyone but about a half dozen that said Hey, Brian, uh, we saw your Facebook post. Uh, we follow your business page and we also follow your personal page. We're friends on Facebook, right? Um, hey, just wanted to let you know, if you want to go ahead and start billing us monthly, just charge our card on file. We have all their credit cards on file. Uh, just go ahead and start charging our cards on file for the regular monthly rate for the lawn service. Go ahead and just charge us for the aeration. Go ahead and just charge us for the spring cleanup. Um, if you get the spring cleanup in, great. If not, absolutely no big deal. If you get the aeration in, it's great. If not, absolutely no big deal. Uh, if you charge us for the spring cleanup and you don't even do it, We'll do it on our own, but go ahead and charge us anyway. We want to, I had like a half dozen of these customers, Jeff. And I will tell you what, we didn't actually take any of them up on it because thank God we didn't have to. We were only shut down for about eight weeks, but it was an option. It was a, right. it was a, it was a contingency. I told Liz, I'm like, here's our, our cash. Here's what we got. Here's what we're, our expenses are. We got, you know, a couple months that it wouldn't have been any big deal. However, uh, that is loyal customers. That is true friendship. And I, I don't know what I'm going to do for these customers yet. You know, once uh, we, you know, stabilize and everything gets back to a little bit more normal, uh, maybe after the election, but I need to do something for those customers because these people were willing to give me three, four, six, eight hundred bucks worth of business for no exchange. And in fact, the guy signed off on the email. He said, this is where him and I, we always say, talk to you soon, brother. Talk to you soon, brother. He goes, that's where brother actually transcends from just a customer relationship to me. He goes, I really do feel like you're my brother. And it's a lawn care business. Yeah, man. That's, but that, that, is gives, that, that gives me goosebumps. That's and, awesome. And I'll tell you, are you talking about a business to business customer? Yeah. Is this a company or? or uh, this is a client, just a customer. It, 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 and you guys probably, everybody has probably got some homes that you're doing and some yep. bit, especially a business to business customer, man. That's sure. where this idea of a partnership, yeah. right? That the reason they're having you come in and do all that cleaning is, is so that they look good. Yeah. And, and you got to have the balls to go in and talk about, here's what, this is what I say to my client. Here's what partnership is. Yeah. I will do anything I can to help you grow your business and help you succeed. Sure. And you do anything you can to help me grow my business. Amen. And I, so I expect you to be there for me to, to not be screwing around with my competitors. Right. I expect you to talk to your friends because that's what right. partnership is. Right. Like, that's what brothership is. Yep. And uh, it, it, yeah. And I, I've had, Oh, that's so sappy. I was going to go in there and, you know, negotiate. Man, I, I do a lot of negotiation training and negotiation training is, Hey, I'm going to come in and do something that that's high value to you right. and easy for me to do. You do something that's high value to me. It's easy for you to do. Yep like a five-star review, like recommending me to your friends. And, you know, you just have a handful of those raving fans and 
they, they can take you to so much more business than you can even handle. Wow. Uh, this has been a gem for me. Uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, don't forget the big uh, thumbs up. We really appreciate this. Um, Jeff Joyner, so he was in town. Uh, he actually shot me an email earlier, and then he's like, hey, look, uh, here's my phone number. Let's connect on the phone. Let's see if I can link up. He's at my house. So you guys listen to this on the podcast. We're actually doing a YouTube video as well. Uh, if you guys want to watch the video format, a lot of guys like uh, the video format podcast with like the Joe Rogan experience, et cetera, right? Um, but to have Jeff at my house, uh, it's uh, definitely an honor and a treat for me. Um, you do have a YouTube channel, by the way. You just started uh, about three or four weeks ago. Yep. You got about 15 videos up there telling all these stories. So Jeff wasn't, uh, I told him, save your funny stories for the live event. Um, Jeff's actually sandbagging right now. Jeff's element is a microphone on stage in front of 500 to 1,000 people. I'm telling you what, funniest guy you've ever heard, you've ever seen. Some of you guys are like, what's a professional storyteller? What is that? You know, it's like, you don't go, do you go to weddings and introduce yourself that way? Like, I'm a Jeff uh, Joyner. I'm a professional no, storyteller. No. <laughs> I think that's my, my Instagram bio is like, Husband, father, storyteller, which is so cheesy. <laughs> this but is I, esoteric hey, thing. But I'll tell you, if you, can make, if you can make it out to the live event that these guys are doing. Scheduled yeah. on November 9th, right? Uh, November 7th, Entrepreneur Academy Live. That's right, November 7th. November 7th. Uh, Saturday. And uh, I'm telling you, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be so far worth your money that you're going to get. I, I think if you are a, uh, a landscaping business owner, you're going to learn more in one day yes. with Brian and the people he's putting together than you'd learn in four years going to college. You're going to learn more relevant uh, impactful information. I mean, I'm just telling you, I think what these guys are doing yeah. is, uh, is certainly leading the industry, uh, and maybe leading lots of other industries too. Sure. Sure. What you guys are doing is awesome. Well, when I, uh, like I said, uh, to take it full circle, when I decided to do a live event, uh, we couldn't do it last year. We didn't have the budget for it. Uh, but we got a couple more sponsors involved and I'm throwing, you know, I, I'm taking less of a profit if you will, from the event. Cause I said, I want some of my friends uh, to come in, people that I've looked up to people that have inspired me. So if you guys have ever heard me tell stories or if you guys have ever heard me, uh, uh, you know, uh, take you through this like whole character arc of me, like try failing and adjust and learning lessons along the way. Uh, Jeff is actually a professional storyteller and he's the one that uh, I wanted to invite in to do some sales training for us. So, um, what's the, uh, social so people can follow you if they want to go down the rabbit hole of Jeff Joyner, YouTube, yeah, my, Instagram. Uh, my uh, website is Jeff Joyner.com. That's J O I N E R Joyner. And, um, yep. Uh, if, uh, yeah, I just launched uh, a YouTube channel that is, uh, you know, and that's the proof in the pudding. Basically I'm telling stories. I've had some of the most bizarre experiences <laughs> in my life that you're ever going to hear. And so it's stories and lessons. Hopefully it's something that, uh, is, uh, you know what I found that the people that are coming for inspiration are, uh, surprised that it's entertaining. Yeah. And the people that come to be entertained are surprised that they're learning something. <laughs> there you go. And so check it out. It's called an Epic life and, uh, it's just really getting rolling. I only got a couple hundred subscribers, uh, but I'd love to have you, uh, jump on board and give me some feedback let me know what you think i love it and um yeah you can instagram yeah uh, on instagram it's uh, jeffrey joiner is what i am on instagram then i also have a second account that's uh, an epic life there you go on instagram but if i can do anything for any of you guys if you have uh uh, a business or a conference or something that you're like, hey, we're looking for a speaker. I'd love to partner with you and uh, see if we can't help you take your business to the next level. I love it. Absolutely. Well, uh, guys, this is Jeff Joyner. Again, uh, go to his website. We'll leave all the links in the description down below. And then also, if you guys are watching on YouTube, we'll leave the uh, the channel down in the comment section, down in the description box. Uh, go over there, subscribe to his channel, check out some of his videos. I think you're actually going to be, uh, like Jeff said, very uh, entertained, have some fun. Uh, and then j he, he just has a great way of baking these like life lessons into there. Uh, he tells you a story for 12 minutes and then you don't really realize it until about the last minute and a half you go oh my god all these lessons were baked into it and it's like uh what do they say my friend keith kelfa says he puts the uh, the vitamins in the ice cream uh yeah. so one of those deals and then you get done with it you go oh my god he was teaching me about leadership and you know helping people and i'm like oh my god but uh any which way uh if you guys haven't watched the videos go check them out i think you guys really enjoy it so jeff thanks so much for being on the show we really appreciate it Awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. That's it for this episode of Fullerton Unfiltered. We're going to kick it back to Marty, Mr. Producer. We'll catch up with you guys on the next one. 